Welcome everyone to today's vlogs. We're going to be chasing ducks. We're going to be checking out some very interesting little properties. We've also got new life being born onto the farm and Otis and I are going to jam in the style of Miles Davis for you guys. I think this will be the first time on the channel that we've done that. I've also got some new technology ready to enhance and improve the channel. We've got snakes and pigs and ducks and all kinds. So let's go. So we've got ourselves another snake guys. Here it is. This looks like a rat snake. But it also it's dead. Oh. oh no, it's not dead. It's alive. It's just not scared. All right, so we nearly lost the camera there. Always be careful where you're walking because what could happen? Because we do have a black snake here. Have you seen a black snake? No, not yet. But Mom, it could be. Yeah, mommy do you have a black snake here. And what will happen if you stand on it? Yeah, bite. And what happened to you then? I don't know. It'll hurt a lot, won't it? Yeah. So you've got to be careful on the farm, yeah? Yeah, but it's... But are you still looking for the black snake? Especially when it rains. When it rains, they all come out. Really? Yeah, and they hide in long grass. So Daddy's cut all the grass today. So we, can, we make sure there's no snakes around, yeah? So you just got to teach them, really, because it is a genuine danger of living here, really. Scolopendra and snake. Uh, we don't just make it up. It's not just for sure for the, for the vlog. These are genuine dangers. And there's been lucky, unlucky people um, that have, have got bitten by the snake, the scolopendra, but also hit by lightning out in a field in a thunderstorm with a, with a phone in the pocket and hit by lightning. Isn't that right, Tis? Really? Yeah. Did it hit by lightning? They got hit by lightning, so you don't come out in a storm, do you? Shaking your phone around like this. Yay! <laughs> Go <laughs> <laughs> like this a big storm. Yeah, this is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I found a duck with a, a bag around its neck. Do you want to help Lulu? They're just being a fatty. Trying to help you. <laughs> Not going to eat you. Are we, ducky? Go on, on your way. <laughs> the adventure of the duck. Thanks for helping, Lulu. Fatty. Oh, we got the, we got babies as well. Um, these are from our original ducks that we bought. Lots of babes. But you just got to watch for the other birds coming to get them. Loads of ducks here now. Little ducklings. I'm going picking up some petrol for the lawnmower, and we have uh, we have the piano teacher in at the moment teaching Tiss. So she's coming now on Saturdays and Sundays, and then obviously he's in school on the other days. So this has gone from a homeschool schedule, which wasn't really that uh, intense, to a really intense schedule now, because, I mean, they're up at probably at 5, 6 a.m. Dan will get up very early. And um, she does the lunch and stuff, and they're taken to school. Um, and then about 7.30, he's at school all day, and I pick him up at 3.34. And then he's always got homework plus on Saturdays and Sundays, both Saturday and Sunday, the piano teacher comes. So it really is an intense schedule for him and we're very grateful that 
out in rural Thailand, we can get this, you know, even like an English program. Um, if you went to the government school here, it would be free. But for the English program, it's a private school. It's a private Thai school, so it's not an international school. Uh, you can, he, he, he gets one hour of English per day. But really, you know, a lot of people want to do English programs when they don't have a Farang parent or, you know, Farang dad because obviously they want the kid to learn English. When you've already got, I mean, I am, I am his international school. I am the one that's teaching in the English. And so when he already has me, uh, there's less necessity for um, an international school, in my opinion. And an international school here would be very, very far away as well. So you'd be talking like two, three hour drive every day, uh, which just wouldn't be practical. And it's like $30,000 a year. So it's expensive. But, um, but now he has this little private school and the kids are nice and the teachers are nice and uh, it really is, it's worked out quite well for us. So this is the local gas station, nothing fancy, nothing too big. And uh, you can see it's very old style. We hear a token dog. There's always a dog hanging around the gas stations in Thailand for sure. So... This is an old, an old pump. Howdy cab. Always got a little shop like this. Did need a little bit of oil too, but put your oil. It's got everything you need. See in little Thailand, you don't need a big fancy gas station. I'll go ha. Same same. Come come back up. A dim tank to help. So she'll get the Gao Nung is your petrol and um, B Jet B Jet is your um, your diesel. So and you've got Gao Ha 95 and 91 there your petrol. Yeah. 260. You speak English too, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Hope I like it. Thank you. No. That's okay. <laughs> tip, tip. <laughs> Thank you. Now, also, I will mention, in rural Thailand, it's not unusual to be out in your pajamas. And I have got my pajama bottoms on. That's rural Thailand, guys. No one gives a crap, you know. Um, you often see people, especially girls, in the 7-Elevens, just like wearing the pajamas and the slippers and stuff like that. I mean, I have a normal t-shirt on, but yeah, get your pajamas. So there's your local petrol station. The show's already stinking the car out. I'm gonna have to open the windows. Um, I'm gonna get high on the drive on the way back off these petrol fumes, which almost also makes me you know, when you see these people working at the petrol stations, filling the petrol all day, you've got to always give a little tip, a little something, something, because they're breathing in all that crap all day to fill up your car, and it's a hard job, it's hard work. I don't know what this is, too. It looks like a little house. I don't know if that is a for sale sign, or it's been foreclosed or something, but it looks like it's available. Interesting. I'm always interested in little properties out in rural Thailand. So now here's another little story that I want to cover. I've been driving past this for a couple of years now and it's like a little house that they built out here. Sorry about the car, probably noisy. It's a little house and I have to find out who the owner is, but he's made like a little pond here and he's made a little toilet. And I don't know if he's living out here or, or what, but I've seen this being built over the past two years. Um, so, I mean, it started with nothing and somebody's carved out a little home out here. You know, they've got a little toilet here, a little bench. It's, like, it's just an interesting little property and, and way of life. So I will, it's got a solar panel on there, on the roof. I will find out who, whose house it is and I'll find out the story. I don't want to just go like walking around and poking around in the house. Looks like there's nobody here, but it's somebody's home, so I don't want to just go 
rooting around in there with a the camera. So I'll find out whose home it is and we'll get, we'll get more details on what they're trying to do out here. I think it's an interesting little story. All right, guys, so it's happening again. Turkeys. Heard a little tweet. Heard a little tweet in there. Let's see what's going on. Is here this? Now, usually this it happens with multiple eggs. Oh, that's the alarm. So usually the multiple eggs are hatched at the same time. So we've got one going off, one coming out, and uh, let's see if the, the other ones are gonna come. Fresh out of the egg. There we go. I think this could be one of the white turkeys. So I don't remember them being yellow when I first hatched them. So this one can chill in the incubator for a bit and stay nice and warm. So just as a short interlude and a bit of fun, Otis and I are jamming together in the style of Miles Davis, I guess. As you may know if you've been following the vlog, when I went to look at land in Phuket, crashed the drone into a tree. So, and it got stuck up there, I couldn't get it back, and that was it, it was lost forever. So I got a new one, and now we've upgraded, as I promised, for the vlog, to the Mavic 3. But this is just the Mavic 3, it's not the Mavic 3 Pro. Now the Mavic 3 Pro has obstacle avoidance, so you can't crash it. So I could have gone for that, but it was like another 10,000 bar extra. So I've gone for the Mavic 3, maybe I'll learn my lesson. I uh, should have got the obstacle avoidance. But the, this has got a better picture. It, it, it has um, the lower sensors in. And the main thing is it comes with this RC, the remote control here, which means that I don't have to plug in my phone every time, because sometimes when you use the, the drone, you have to plug in your phone. This one has a screen already built in. So don't need to plug in the phone which takes time you can just send it up so the, it was 20,000 baht in total it was 30,000 baht if you wanted the the Mavic 3 Pro and that came with this RC um, but the the obstacle avoidance and the track so I didn't go for that so maybe I'll regret that in the end what do you think Tis? do you think your daddy is good at flying drones maybe maybe why do you say maybe yeah. Yeah, sometimes, but sometimes what do I do? Mm. Crashed it, don't I? The phone. Now, what did Tish say to me yesterday? La last night, I was going to have the drone in the house, wasn't I? In the cottage. I was going to start the drone, wasn't I? And what did you say? Don't do it. Why did you say don't do it? After, oh, I did one at Crokin. I did one... I didn't want to cook it. Normally kids would say, do it, do it. But you said, don't do it because you're such a sensible kid, aren't you? So let me take this one off here. And then let's... So this is looking to connect now. So it's time to fly the new drone. And this yeah. is just so much cooler, this, this RC. 
than just the phone because my phone's all scratched and banged up and damaged as well. I really messed that up. This this you can keep nicely. Look at this screen. It's like high definition. Well, straight away, I can tell you something very different about this. It is much quieter. It's much quieter than the other drone. The handling is much more sensitive. The screen is super clear, super high definition. The handling is amazing. Don't go too close, this. The handling is superb. And the sound is fantastic. It's so quiet. Yeah, it's much quieter than the last one, isn't it? This is just giving it a go here. Right, go forward, dentist. That's to the side. Go forward. So that's it, Mavic 3, get ready for some more epic drone shots. The camera's the same as the Mavic 3 Pro, uh, 60, 30 frames per second 4K, something like that. Um, and I mean, all in all, the only thing it doesn't have is the obstacle avoidance. So I, I, ended up, I, had, to, I had to think to myself, pay 10,000 baht just for obstacle avoidance. I mean, it is the one thing that I really need. But I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that. So maybe it'll be a mistake, who knows? One, two, ready, go. Two, two. Two. Okay, down two. <laughs> One, two, ready, go. Two, three, four, very good! High five! 